Hey everyone, it's Kiwi here for Soyin Shay, and thank you so much for joining me for today's video. Every time I post anything about magnesium oil spray over on my Instagram channel, I get tons of questions about this stuff, about how it's made, how, uh, what it does for you, how to use it and things like that. And the last time I actually posted about magnesium chloride, I was asked if the next time I made my magnesium oil spray, if I could make a video. So here we are today. So first, a little bit about magnesium oil spray. The name's actually quite deceptive. It's not an oil it's actually the texture that the magnesium chloride and water when it's combined together actually create it creates this really oily texture and that is where the name comes from now magnesium is actually a mineral that our bodies need to help keep our nerves and muscles nice and healthy so that they don't cramp up and things like that now generally we used to get it out of food but because of modern day farming and how quickly we replant the soils and things a lot of that magnesium has now been stripped out of our food and there are other ways in which we can actually obtain magnesium in our body the two ways are either to take a supplement or you can use a magnesium oil spray using it topically and it sinks down into your skin and the body absorbs it um, some people have more um, a quicker reaction to a spray than what they do to um, supplements that they might be taking as part of their diet you choose what works best for you you and always speak to doctors before actually deciding to look into this sort of stuff more. So what magnesium oil spray actually does for you or magnesium, there are so many different uses for it. You do have to be careful when you're promoting the spray as part of your business because you cannot make any medical claims. But some of the things that people say um, that it is good for or that there are known benefits for, um, it can actually help with skin complexion. So if you are having issues with your skin, you can spray it on rub it in and it helps to take the sort of the redness and that sort of thing out of skin now if you do have sensitive skin you need to start off with a weaker solution and work your way up to the stronger solutions there's things like for me personally I get massive tension headaches across the back of my shoulders here from constantly stooping over tables and doing all the computer work I do and everything else so what I like to do when I can feel that tension building up in my shoulders I usually spray across the back of my shoulders and that really helps those muscles to to relax and let go and that tension headache disappears um, my husband he sprays it on his knees he's actually got bolts in his knees from a prior um, incident sports related incident and he likes to spray it on his knees to really help with that you can also spray it on the backs of your legs to stop cramping of like the calf muscles you can spray them on the soles of your feet and that is meant to help with restless leg syndrome at night time and can also help you get to sleep you can spray it on your lower back if you get lower back issues um, there's all sorts of other things like if you've been to the gym and you know that you've done a really heavy workout with weights you can spray it directly where the muscles are maybe in your arms your legs whichever muscles it is that you have been working on and it helps to stop those muscles from becoming really sore and cramping up and everything else associated with those sort of heavy lifting jobs there are so many different uses for it magnesium oil can also be pretty good for the hair it can stop a lot of the frizz so you can spray it in your hair um, stops the frizz but also it does give it that little bit of volume because of the salt as well there are so many uses for magnesium um, oil spray and I highly recommend you google it to see what uses you can have also double check whether you can actually sell it in your country because there are a lot of medical claims that go with this so some countries may say that you cannot sell this product but you can probably make it and um, use it personally something else you can also do with this spray or you could just do with the salts directly is to pour some of it into a bag bathtub and then you can actually sit and relax in a magnesium salt bath as well and that really helps to de-stress you so there is just so many uses for this spray now when I first started looking into making this spray I think I spent about eight to ten months actually researching how to make it because I couldn't believe it was so easy to make and um, after researching and not coming up with any sort of anything different than what I was finding I realized that this um, particular product product 
literally only t contains two ingredients and that is magnesium chloride salt flakes and also some distilled water. You do not need preservative in this product because the high amount of salt is what keeps it as self-preserving so you do not need to put that preservative in, it won't do anything for it. You can put essential oils into it though really I probably wouldn't um, unless you want like a sleep time magnesium spray. Most of my customers actually want it unscented so I don't bother putting the essential oils in. Now one thing to be aware of when you are using a magnesium oil spray is when you are using it for the very first time or maybe the first few times, you'll spray it on your skin and you'll get this sort of tingling sensation. If you've ever been down the beach, been swimming in the ocean, then you've sat on the beach and you get that stinging sensation from the salt water as your skin dries, that is what magnesium oil spray can sometimes feel like on the skin on those first few times that you use it. And from everything that I have read about about it, it actually suggests this is a good sign that, or a bad sign could be, um, that you are actually low in magnesium. So the more you actually use that spray and the more you build it up in the body, the less likely you are to actually react to that spray. So if it is your first time making this for yourself or if you want to um, consider your customers different skin requirements like sensitive skin and not sensitive or normal skin, you may want to adjust the levels of salt that you add into your um, into your mix so you may want to start off with maybe 30% magnesium chloride and then 70% water um, you can use 40% 45 50 whatever you want to use as a percentage so it's just those two I would go somewhere between 30 and 50 percent of your magnesium chloride and then make the rest up of water I probably wouldn't go any higher than 50 percent because water does become saturated with that magnesium chloride and after a certain point it will no longer dissolve that salt and absorb it into it and 50 percent is pretty much that sort of one for one ratio and water doesn't take on much more more than that so I would stick somewhere between using 30 and 50 percent of your magnesium chloride and it really is as simple as that so you can use um, 30 percent magnesium chloride 70 percent water and I would probably use that on someone with more sensitive skin or someone who is actually just starting out using the spray and then as you become more accustomed to the spray that's when you can start going up to your 40 and 50 percent as well so let's go and see how I actually make the magnesium chloride let's go so the first thing I am going to do for this magnesium oil spray is weigh out my water component and we're going to bring it up, not quite to boil, but we do want to bring it up in its temperature. Now when I'm pouring this out, I am measuring out about 10% more than what I calculated it to be, what I actually needed. And this is because as we warm this up, some of this is going to evaporate through steam. And when we actually go to pour it on our salt, we still want that sort of set amount of water so we'll be able to make sure that we've got enough in our pot so let's go and get this on top of the stove before we do that I know I'm going to get heaps of questions about my scales because I always do this set of scales does not have a brand name um, what I have done is down in the description box there are links to where I have purchased this in Australia and if you are overseas there is also links to where you can purchase it through Amazon um, America as well so let's go and get this on the stove So while our water is coming up to temperature, we're going to do our salts. Now I'm going to be using a plastic bucket for doing this. Now the reason I don't do it in my stainless steel saucepan is because even though it is stainless steel, our stainless steel is not as good as what it once was and I find that the salts can easily rust out the, um, the stainless steel pots when you leave them in there to actually cool down. So I always make mine up in one of these buckets and these buckets are um, heat safe which you do need for that water. When it comes to the salts, I only ever buy my magnesium chloride in very small amounts. The reason being, I did once buy it in bulk and I ended up having to get rid of pretty much all of what I had left after making a few batches. 
magnesium chlor chloride is hygroscopic I believe that's how you say it I will put the spelling of it up on the screen but basically what it means is that it draws water in it's not just a, like a humectant it literally sucks water in and then it literally turns to water as well so I only ever buy it in very small amounts I make sure I have it in a very airtight container in fact usually I would have this salt in the bag that it came in inside a plastic container because I've had it in these containers where little bits of moisture actually still get in and it just destroys the salt that is in here so I always try and keep to very small amounts making sure that when I'm not using it the lid is on so that any of the sort of natural moisture in the air can't get to it what I'm going to do is pour out what I need of my salts into this bucket here so we have our salts our water has now come up to temperature I'm not at boiling I'm at about 73 to 75 degrees which is plenty warm enough to melt these salts down so I'm just going to pour my hot water onto my magnesium chloride here I'm going to give it a good stir making sure I'm using a silicon spatula and no uh, metal whisks or anything because the salt will eat into the coating of your whisks and you end up with these little pock marks in your um, equipment I've actually ruined a whole saucepan when I left my mix in it to cool overnight and I came in and I had all these rust spots all over my saucepan and I actually had to throw it away throw away the mix and start again the other thing is if you actually get any of this splashed onto your scales make sure you are washing it off it's not that it's actually dangerous it doesn't hurt the skin but the high level of salt salt and um, metal do not go together salt will cause oxidization in metal and will cause it to rust and um, but it's perfectly safe to use on the skin just not on metal here so I've given that a good stir. I'm pretty happy that all of my salts have actually dissolved. Now, if you've watched any of my um, moisturizer or uh, bath and body products you'll know that I do not like bottling or potting my stuff up while it is still warm so what I'm going to do is cover this over with my silicon film here pop that on because this is a plastic container it's not going to stick very well so I'm going to pop that over I've got a little elastic tie here pop that on to make sure it is held down well and that's just to stop any of that um, evaporation causing too much of this to go right so now that is all covered up I'm going to leave this to sit and cool what I will actually explain right now because I should have done it while I was pouring the water in as I was pouring the water in I was actually watching my scale number I've ended up with about 10 grams extra water um, in my mix here which I'm happy with because a lot of that's gonna um, disappear through condensation on here anyway now if my water had been any more than 10 grams over I probably would have just left it in the pan and used it for something different um, if it was anything under I would just top it up with some cold distilled water so we're gonna leave this one to sit and then we'll come out and bottle it up in a bit okay so my magnesium oil is now actually ready to bottle up into the spray bottles but before I do that because I get so many questions about where I get my labels printed and things like that I thought I would actually take you over to the computer and show you a little bit more I print and design all of my own labels and up until late last year I was using Corel Draw and I was also using a HP laser printer to print all my labels on die cut sheets or on a four sticker paper and cutting them down now late last year I decided to invest in a brand new printer which is this one here it is an Epson TM3500 and this printer does not print on a four or letter paper it is specifically designed for printing on rolls of label and also you can put through ticketing cards like when you go to football games and that sort of thing and you get that little piece of cardboard or like your airplane tickets are on that piece of cardboard that is what this printer prints out it uses special rolls of paper um, to actually do them so you buy the the size 
or the width roll that you want and then you can print your labels to whichever length that you want them to be printed. So I'm not going to show too much about it because unless you have access to that printer um, there's no point really actually seeing how it works but I will take you along and do a quick little demonstration of how it actually prints because it's pretty fun actually and it it has been the most expensive printer I have ever bought in all of my life of buying printers um, but it certainly has been a really good investment for the business it prints labels really well makes them look a lot more professional than what the laser printers do so it definitely has been a good investment the only thing is when I invested in this printer I was using Corel Draw um, to do the label designing and it became a little bit too difficult to actually design them in Corel Draw and get it to communicate into that printer it just it could be done it was just very long-winded mainly because the version of Corel Draw I had was so old um, it wasn't communicating with a lot of things I was having quite a few issues with it because of the age of the program and I figured if I was going to have to update Corel Draw to a more recent version and I also needed to update my video editing software I decided to actually swap over to the Adobe Cloud instead and I now use Adobe Illustrator to do all my my label designs in so I already have my template for the magnesium oil I'm going to show you a quick little demonstration of how I get my printer all set up and then we'll go and bottle up the magnesium oil Alright, so all of the labels are now printed up. Just a couple of other little things about this printer which I really, really love and has made my job just so much easier. Um, all of these labels, I actually print these ones up on waterproof paper. You do get a choice of the type of paper that you get with your labels when you buy them. I chose to go with waterproof for most of them. I do have some high gloss paper for things like lip balm that doesn't come into contact with liquid, but all of my liquid products um, will have the waterproof um, paper with them. Now, with this printer, Printer. even though the printer was super expensive the ink cartridges are very cheap um, to replace in it um, that is because it actually is ink cartridges as opposed to toner which is what your lasers use um, so I can actually replace all the colors and they all come as separate colors in there and um, even though it is an inkjet printer it prints like a laser because it has special technology within that ink so as soon as it goes onto this paper even though it is basically paper that you would put through a laser the ink is dry on here and it doesn't smudge when it comes into contact with water so I absolutely love the printer for those features but let's go and get this magnesium oil spray all bottled up and labeled so just as we had to think about the equipment we were using when making our magnesium oil here, we also need to think about the type of packaging that we're going to use. Now because um, this is very high in salt, just as I said you had to be careful with using and leaving this sitting in metal containers, you cannot package this in aluminium bottles, which is something I would have loved to have done, but the salts in it will actually eat away and corrode that metal and create far more health issues um, than what it is worth. Now the other option is to put this into glass bottles but you do need to be very aware that people are going to want to throw this into their gym bag and stuff like that so there is a potential for glass bottles to break that liquid's going to come out and it's going to cause more damage and that could potentially also damage how people then perceive your your products as well you also need to double check with your insurance company whether you can actually use glass to package up um, packaging now what I chose to do because glass is not an option for me with my insurance and aluminium is not 
an option I use aluminium bottles for all of my room space I went with these these bottles are actually made with recycled PET so that means this company they're actually based here in Australia they take all of the plastic cosmetic jars that are added into land or into recycle bins they take them they melt them down and sterilize them and then they create new bottles this is actually a repurposed um, plastic bottle this is not a bottle that someone else has bought back to me to refill but it is made with recycled plastic so I feel better about using these because I know that they have had a second third and maybe even fourth life who knows so that is what I'm going to package mine into it then means my customers are safe it means the product is safe and it means my insurance company is safe or happy with me as well what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the sprayers I like to use the fine mist sprayers on these and all I do is I line the bottom of my sprayer up because you always end up with a really long tail on these these are designed to go in all of the bottles that they do so bigger shorter so you always need to trim down this bit what I'm going to do now I've got that lined up I'm going to get my scissors and I'm going to cut that off on an angle so that now means that when that goes in it is the right size you don't want them to be too much longer in the bottom here because of the way that it pulls the liquid up if it's too long eventually it will stop spraying but you also need it so it's going to sit in the bottom so your customers can get every last little bit out now that I've done one just to make it easier I get the piece that I cut off I get two or maybe three of these at the same time line them all up across the bottom like so and then I trim them down and it just makes it that little bit quicker so let me get the rest of these all trimmed off okay so now that that is all done it is time to get this um, salt mix into our bottles just going to give that a bit of a stir there just to make sure there are no bits stuck to the bottom and no there is not it is all completely dissolved in here what I'm going to do I actually like to weigh mine I'm going to grab my scale I am going to grab myself a little jug tear it all out and pour out what I know I need to fill my bottles up to be that 100 ml and then I'm going to pour it straight into my bottle and I'm going to fill all 10 of these up Once you've finished filling in those bottles, if you have got any droplets of that water on the top of your metal scales, make sure you are wiping it off. I had done these one late afternoon and I did not wipe the top of my scale off and I came back the next morning and there were lots of little rust marks all over the top of the scale and I actually had to buy myself a new set of scales because it was no longer safe to use to do my bath and body products. So now every time I have made my uh, magnesium oil, I make sure that I wipe the top of that off. Now I do have some left over in my bucket. I always make just a little bit more just in case we have any spills. Um, and then what happens with this leftover stuff, this actually goes into my hubby's bottle and I just keep topping his up every time I make the magnesium oil spray. What I'm gonna do now is just pop on all of these caps and then we will put the labels onto our bottles. The other thing I really like about this label printer is that all of these sticker rolls come so that they've got that sort of split line which makes them really easy to peel off. I'm just going to, I always line up the front of my bottle first so I can have it in line with the sprayer. So that is it there and then I just pull it tightly around and pop it down like so. And that is our magnesium oil. Whenever I am labeling, I always try and make sure that my bottle is facing me at a right angle. 
and then when I pop my label down, let's oh, get the backing off here, what I'm doing is I'm looking at it as a whole. Now you can actually find crease lines on here and then wrap the label around, but I then find that my labels aren't in the right place and it just drives me absolutely potty with my, um, my OCD about it. So what I do is I lay the bottle down and what I'm looking is to make sure that the bottom of the bottle is straight with the bottom of my label and once I'm happy that it's straight I pop it down pull it back and around tight and then most of the time I might be like a millimeter out when it goes around but for the most part it is nice and straight on the bottles so let me finish getting these ones all done up Okay, so that is just how easy it is to make magnesium oil spray. Remember, as I said at the beginning of the video, you can make this into any strength that you actually want. Probably wouldn't go over the 50-50 mark when making this. Um, because it won't dissolve um, but you can make it any strength you want so if you've got really sensitive skin and you're keen to give this a go start off at a lower sort of rate of magnesium to water and then as you build up that sort of um, I won't say resistance that's not the right word but as you start to get used to the magnesium oil on your skin and your skin starts to accept it then you can start increasing the amount of magnesium that you are putting into it so I hope you have enjoyed watching how I made it if you did why not leave me a thumbs up any comments down below and until the next video comes out i hope you have a great one and i'll see you then bye